There's a new space race underway. This time, it's not between two countries, but between two companies. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos' company Blue Origin announced plans Monday for its new Glenn rocket. Not only will parts of it be reusable, it's also much bigger than Elon Musk and SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. Derek Pitts is the chief astronomer and planetarium director at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, and he joins me now. Good to see you, Derek. Good evening, Vlad. All right, so obviously New Glenn is named in honor of John Glenn, first American to orbit the Earth. What is the goal for Bezos with this new rocket? Well, the goal for Bezos with this new rocket is really the same as with his other rockets, and that is he wants to be able to provide uh, access to low Earth orbit much cheaper than it has been provided before and reliably with a high degree of safety. This new rocket that he's talking about, New Glenn, actually will have much greater ca uh, payload capability than any rocket he's worked with before or rockets that have preceded this, even the SpaceX uh, rockets. All right, so there's probably a Freud joke that I could make here, but is the, since the new Glenn <laughs> is bigger than Falcon 9, does that mean that Jeff Bezos is ahead of Elon Musk in the space race? Well, you know, it's an interesting thing to consider because if you look at uh, the track record that Jeff Bezos has, last year he launched his uh, BE-3 rocket system on the new Shepard he launched that four times uh, repeatedly. So he had a, 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 an initial launch in April, and then four other launches after that, repeating with the same rocket, all the way up to uh, 330,000 feet. So he had four successful launches and vertical landings in one year. And that's really remarkable. And we haven't heard as much about that as we've heard about the SpaceX effort. Now, the SpaceX effort, of course, has been very exciting because they've been trying to land their spacecraft vertically on a barge out in the ocean, while Bezos has been doing all of this from West Texas. So I'd say they're at least neck and neck, if not Bezos is slightly ahead in a sense, because he's been able to do it right on land and with the same rocket over and over and over again. All right, so regardless of where these billionaires are with developing their rockets, um, how far, give us a timeline, Derek, when can we expect to use these rockets to carry normal people, not astronauts, into space? I think within the next five years, we're going to see humans on board these spacecraft in the initial test flights for a, a human uh, venturing into space with these. Because, you know, one of the things that Bezos uh, says that he wants to do is he wants to open uh, low Earth orbit for regular people to be able to travel to space as tourists. So I believe his plans are to begin human test flights as early as 2018. And so that means that he'll be coming on with, you know, more flights available for the general public, certainly in the 2020s. Now, the same is true for SpaceX, except for SpaceX has a different agenda, if you can, in, in a way. And that is that what Elon Musk wants to do is he wants to provide reliable access to low Earth orbit using reusable rockets, but for more commercial purposes, like launching satellites and also for bringing astronauts and supplies to International Space Station. He's already been doing some of that, bringing supplies to International Space Station, and next he'll have to tackle the chore of being able to flight uh, test his rockets for human use as well. But that's going to happen within the next five years as well. All right, so I'll still be around for that. That's good to hear. <laughs> um, in other space news, Derek, there's a new study published in the journal Nature that says that the explosion that created the moon was more violent than we originally thought. So give me a sense of what the theory was before this and what it is now. Well, the theory before this was that there was a collision of a what we could call like a proto-Earth or an early Earth with an object about the size of Mars in the early history of the solar system. Now, one of the things we have to keep in mind, Vlad, is that the early solar system was a highly dynamic place, lots and lots of things going on, and indeed more planets in the solar system at that time than we see now. So there's lots of great dynamics happening. Well, the newest theory or examination of lunar rocks indicates that there's a possibility that maybe Maybe the collision of these two objects was much more violent than originally thought. And that was observed through the indication of a certain level of potassium-41, I think it was, that was identified in the lunar rocks. And what, it, what this theory says is that because there's so much more of this particular isotope of potassium, it indicates that that collision was much more violent, indeed vaporizing almost all of the Earth 
out of which was then born both the reformed Earth and the moon orbiting the Earth. It's so fascinating, and it's something that me and my nerd friends like always talk about, which is the creation of the universe, creation of the Earth. Um, and it is, it, it is scientific, scientific fact, as far as we know, Derek, that the moon is obviously older than the Earth. Is the moon even older than the sun? I've seen uh, theories that it might even be older than our sun. No, it can't be possible for the moon to be older than the sun because all of the material in our solar system is born out of that cloud of gas and dust that originally formed the sun. Aha. So while some of the materials that are in that cloud may be older, the actual object that we know of as the moon is subsequent to the formation of at least the early proto-Earth and is probably maybe consistent in its formation with the Earth as we know it, but that still has yet to be proven because there's a lot more examination of the materials that we have, the lunar rocks, and understanding how the dynamics of the early solar system you know, took place anyway before we can say for sure. Fascinating. I love talking about this stuff with you, Derek. Thanks so much for joining Always us. Always good stuff. Yes, thank you, Vlad.